to take his position on somewhat, well, I was going to say somewhat firmer ground, except that there's nothing firmer than the deck of the Iowa, and take the salute from the tall ships as they make their way into New York Harbor. And just in case you didn't hear Sam Donaldson, I think we would all concur. The president likes nothing more than to pay a visit to America's service personnel, whether the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, or the Coast Guard, which has done such an extraordinary job of keeping this harbor organized. Governor's Island, to which the president is now making his way, is actually the headquarters for the U.S. Coast Guard all the way from Florida up to New England. And we cannot say it too many times, they have been wonderful hosts to the international press here today. You mentioned, Peter, that uh, helicopters have become a very common thing aboard naval vessels. They, not only for transportation, but as part of their armament. For that matter, they've become something of a common sight on board private vessels. Malcolm Forbes of Forbes magazine, I know this has commissioned a new yacht for himself, which has been making its way around the harbor from time to time, and he has a helicopter on board, takes up the entire back deck. This is, it's a comfortable way to go to sea on Highlander with uh, Malcolm Forbes' yacht. And so we're going to leave the USS Iowa for a while now. She was the focal point of the International Naval Review. As we said, she was the namesake of one of the most famous class of ships in American naval history. She was the most powerful ship built during the Second World War. She was in the Pacific. She was in the Atlantic. She carried President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill and Joseph Stalin today underneath those 16-inch guns, which they will not fire lest they break all the windows in Manhattan, she has carried the president and Mrs. Reagan. And now they will leave and come here to Governor's Island. Our coverage, ABC News coverage of Operation Sail, will continue after this and a word from your local station. spreading the news. Heard the news? Ounce for ounce, Philadelphia brand cream cheese has just half the calories of butter or margarine. So... Start spreading the news. Rich, creamy, Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Since 1880, half the calories of butter or margarine. Start spreading the news. Grandpa brought me here back in 1986. Gave me this U.S. Liberty coin. Wow, that's a beauty, too. Mighty precious, minted by the U.S. Treasury to celebrate her centennial. Is that why your grandpa got it? And so I could give it to you. United States Liberty coins, singly or in sets at banks, savings and loans, and Montgomery Ward stores. Keep liberty in mint condition forever. You got that confidence. You got that style. that are right for you, right to you. So no wonder you look the way you look. You took the world out, you and Avon, and look how good you look now. Look how good you look now. To leave the safe and comfortable, to take on new challenges, new opportunities, it's that spirit that moved people to build a new world. And it's in that spirit that the rock itself now moves to a new world of financial services, stocks and bonds, IRAs, home mortgages, and new forms of insurance. The rock, the prudential, moving to a new world. ABC's coverage of Operation Sale 86 will continue in a moment. Angela's teaching the tricks of the advertising trade. Go teach. <laughs> and Tony's in for some lesson. You gave me an F. You got an F? 
Oh, you're grounded for a week. Who's the boss? Then it must be contagious, because Mike blows his IQ test. <laughs> what did Mike get? At 27. You're saying my son is an idiot. No. Technically, he's an imbecile. You're growing pains. Tuesday. Travel America with Key Food. You can win a new car, a free vacation for four, free food certificates. Enter Key Food's Travel America sweepstakes at Key Food now. Yes, I want to look at the sleeve. Hello, girls. Oh, I, said, uh, I need another limousine. Where's the yellow pages? Uh, Mama, have you seen the yellow pages? Uh, Gina, where's the yellow pages? I don't know. One book is in more homes, helping people find more goods and services. The official directory of New York Telephone. The 9X Yellow Pages. Girl. It's always there when you need it. It bounced. Does your bank account make you feel embarrassed? Get City One from Citibank. It's good. It's good. And feel the confidence of no bounce checking. When you want cash for a deposit and check, does your bank upset you? Get City One. It makes banking simple. City One combines checking, savings, and credit cards in one account. Deposit that check and get cash from it instantly. Plus 24 hour access to it all. Feel what it's like to have the best bank account. City One. This is WABC TV Channel 7, New York City. Live from New York Harbor, Operation Sale continues. Here now is Peter Jennings. Good again, and welcome back to New York Harbor. We will see as much of this harbor as we possibly can, this great port, 750 miles of shoreline surrounding this great port as President Reagan and Mrs. Reagan make their way by helicopter from the USS Iowa here to Governor's Island where they will take the salute of Operation Sail, a remembrance of the great age of sail which, as we all know from our history books, may have begun with Christopher Columbus in terms of this country and ended as recently as 1957. Breville, we're going to hear a lot of... We've already heard quite a few phrases I think people may not understand. First of all, what's a tall ship? Well, there is no firm definition of that. I think it was coined by Macefield the poet, uh, remembering the line of all I want is a tall star and a, a tall, tall ship, ship and a star, star to steer, to steer her, her by, by, if we can get our lines straight. <laughs> Um, but I think that's where the tall ship uh, name comes from. But generally for these activities, the tall ships of which uh, we're speaking are those that can't sail under the Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge has a height of about 125 feet above water. And um, so ships that cannot get under that are those that are classified in, as the tall ships here. Okay, but let me just get this clear. The tall is the height of the mast or the length of the ship? It, it, it really doesn't matter. Height of the mast is what is defining the uh, tall ships for, for this kind of an event. Those that cannot go up the East River uh, under the, under the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. And under, what, can they get under the George Washington Bridge? Yes, they can. Mm. I yeah, don't I think know the they, height of that they can certainly get under the Verrazano's <laughs> Narrows Bridge. We know that. We know that. There they are, some of them with their sails flying, though the wind is against them this morning, so they are under power as well as under sail this morning. Now we've got Class A tall ships, Class B tall ships. What's the difference? Well, there's a bit of a shuffle in all of these. Um, what they're doing, the Class A's are the generally 170 foot and up vessels, but there's a bit of a shuffle as in the uh, center line of the first 24. Uh, uh, tall ships coming up. There are some smaller ones, but that was a diplomatic decision, trying to make sure that the nations were properly represented. Well, let's go and take a closer look at one of them. One of the most popular and, and one of the ones that has become most familiar to Americans because it has been here before is the Denmark, which is a training ship in Denmark. It was given to this country or lent to this country back in World War II as a training vessel for 5,000 young sailors. They had a rather windy out, night out there outside the harbor at Sandy Hook and ABC's Richard Threlkel joined her and before long we've got a camera on board the Denmark and we'll talk to Richard Threlkel about how the young seamen on board the Denmark who's 252 feet long have enjoyed their night and are enjoying their day. Now let's try to hear from him. Richard, no Threlkel. Not going to have a chance to talk to Richard Threlkel in just a moment so we'll tell you just a little bit about the Denmark. As I said she's one of the most popular ships She's a wind jammer.
and she has been here before. She participated in Operation Sail in 1976. She's a ship, and she's full rigged. Now, Rebel Carr, what does a ship full rigged mean? Well, that means she has three or more masts and square sails on each of those masts. Um, and as as uh, the, the differentiation from that is a bark, which would be three or more masts and uh, square sails on all but the last mast. So when they're square sails on all three or four or five masts, uh, that is a ship rig. Okay, we're gonna get that figured out before the day is over. <laughs> the Denmark is uh, sails out of Copenhagen every year, and now let's try for Richard Threlkett. Good morning, Richard. Peter, I, I was trying to tell you before we're on the stern of this vessel. We spent the last two days here, and it's been absolutely magnificent. It reminds me of one of those lovely old Courier and I prints from the 19th century of New York Harbor, just a forest of stars and bars and uh, wooden sailing masts. The uh, 80 cadets, uh, Danish merchant marine cadets, have been having a very busy time of it. Life is no picnic on, uh, on a vessel like this, but this is the last day for them. They will be on uh, their way home very shortly after their six months of training and will become, most of them, uh, officers in the Danish Merchant Marine. Most important, after several weeks at sea, they're going to have liberty at South Street Seaport tonight if there's any room for them. You'll notice we, uh, not only we, but many of the ships have begun to break out some sail, so even if there's the slightest hint of the breeze, you're going to see a forest of white as we go up the Hudson. Peter? Richard, thank you very much. Uh, lucky you having a nice day under sail as the Denmark makes her way up from lower New York Bay into this harbor. 23 tall ships we will see before this day is over, some enormous like the Denmark, some tiny, but all romantic and all evoking history. We'll be back in just a moment. ABC's presentation of Liberty Weekend is brought to you by Texaco's Advanced Formula Haviland Motor Oil for high-quality engine protection. The Stroh Brewery Company, proud to be a founding sponsor of the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation. Kmart, the saving place. We're proud to say you made us America's favorite store. And the new Chrysler Corporation. They don't want to be the biggest, they just want to be the best. Who really makes the best-built American cars and trucks today? Not two or three years ago, today. A survey of owners of 1986 GM, Ford, and Chrysler models shows that as a group, Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler are the highest quality cars and trucks designed and built in North America. And only Chrysler backs the quality of every car and truck it builds with a 550 protection plan. In 1986, Chrysler makes the best-built, best-backed American cars and trucks, period. Honey, I'll only be a minute. I just need to pick up this one thing. Kmart, where more people shop. Turn it down, Mac. And shop. And shop. Than anywhere else. So what happened to the one thing? It's in there. America's favorite store. Kmart, the saving place. Brewing. It's more than a way to make Strohs and Stroh light. It's a family tradition passed down from one generation to another for over 200 years. It's what guarantees that smooth, consistent taste for generations to come. Now you're talking Strohs. Now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times. And Strohs is spoken here. Mama! You were dressed. Oh, I forgot to put on my powder, honey. I'm getting married in one hour. And I'm going to be cool and collected, even if it is the hottest day of the year. Oh, I should have alone. Well, you told me not to be too emotional. Oh, Mama. You know, the first time I ever used this. No, Mama, when? When you were just a baby. Johnson's Baby Powder, a feeling you never outgrow. From Johnson & Johnson. Things a little slow this summer? What is going on? Oh, you think it's easy doing nothing all day? Take a tip from Maddie and Dave. You swing from a vine, Addison. Sounds like fun. Try a little moonlighting. Then, beneath the calm of Boston... My name is Spencer. ...a storm is raging. He's the one who makes her have sex with him! Her old father! But standing between an innocent child and a twisted love... <laughs> Spencer for hire. Tuesday.
one of New York's famous fire boats welcoming the tall ships as they make their way into the harbor proper. This is, of course, a working port which has seen hundreds of years of history. And all over the harbor this morning, you'll see fire boats and tugs doing their job on this particular day as this whole thing gets choreographed almost. It is so large that an enormous number of things can go on at any time. We don't know where they've come from, this couple, but they would have to qualify as among the smallest craft here. We have been looking for a bathtub, but we haven't found one. We wouldn't be surprised to see somebody show up in a bathtub. The flotilla of pleasure boats, for the most part, and no port in the world can turn out as many pleasure boats as this one, is essentially moved down uh, out of the upper bay, down into the lower bay, to join the tall ships and provide a tail and wings for this armada as it makes its way up. President Reagan has now landed on board Governor's Island. We have a brief burst of cannon from the Ellis Island side of the harbor. There's going to be, as we said, a ceremony and uh, something of an entertainment show on Governor's Island here this morning, which used to be called Nut Island, for those of you who remember your American history. Let's go to the other, the most famous island of all, Liberty Island, once called Bedloe's Island, once called Oyster Island, now it is Liberty Island, and Jim Wooten is there. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Peter. Uh, I think we can just call it a grand place to be this morning. Absolutely. I, um, I suppose it's possible uh, to ooh and ah too much about the, uh, the beauty and the grandeur of this statue, but probably not in uh, one weekend. Because one of the things that impresses anyone who walks around this island to any uh, extent is that from any angle, the statue looks good, looks grand. And for the uh, sailors aboard the tall ships coming into New York Harbor, and even for the pilots, uh, the Thunderbirds and, and the Blue Angels and the rest, it looks good from up there. As a matter of fact, um, it's probable that more people have seen this statue from the air than any place else. And the first to fly by, just as a, uh, a historical note, was made by a famous aviator named Wilbur Wright in 1909. It's hard to imagine that this statue could look good from any perspective, could look bad from any perspective. But it must have been very difficult for people before it was raised here in the harbor to imagine that it would look good because Bartholdi, the sculptor, was not particularly well known. Nothing that he had done reminded anyone of uh, Bernini or Michelangelo. And the New York Times was uh, not very hot for the idea of uh, building Bartholdi's statue here in the harbor. And they said so in an editorial. But then suddenly, uh, as New York uh, uh, lost interest in the statue and couldn't raise enough funds to build uh, this pedestal on which it sits, Boston took a very avid interest and uh, expressed uh, a great deal of willingness to put it there in Boston Harbor. And all of a sudden, the New York Times waxed very fond of the statue and said, we should rather see this thing shredded into minute particles than to be stuck up there in Boston Harbor. Well, Jim, you've introduced the, uh, the aspect of the newspaper competition. It was actually the New York World. Its publisher, Joseph Pulitzer, a Hungarian immigrant who really got people going, didn't it, to finally raise money to build a pedestal on which to put the statue. Yes, and the pedestal itself, though, is a, which was designed by an American, Richard Morris Hunt, is about 40 or 50 feet smaller than uh, he originally desi designed it uh, for cost cuts, which I suppose that, that might have been a 19th century version of the Graham Rudman bill. In the end, it cost just as much because he, uh, he put so much adornment on it. Jimmy, thank you very much. And there is the torch which President Reagan relit last night. And here, as Jim Wooten has been talking about, we've got a little bit of everything here this morning, is the New York Times from 1886 on the day which the statue was dedicated. And the New York Times waxed as eloquent then as the New York Times ever waxes. France's gift accepted a great holiday to be remembered in this city, magnificent land and water parades. In fact, it rained like nobody's business, so I cannot tell you how lucky we are today to have such a glorious fourth in all respects for the rededication of the Statue of Liberty 100 years since it was given to this country. One disappointment for those of you who happened to see the opening ceremonies on television last night and all that magnificent lighting. We are 
I'm not sure we're sorry or not, but the lighting was provided by David Walper, who is the impresario who put together uh, much of Liberty Weekend, and those very expensive lights which gave the statue, some people think almost too much light last night, but certainly gave it a great deal, uh, are now going to disappear. And the statue will be seen in her more natural state with the available light. It is the torch, of course, which shines uh, both in physical and in literal ways all around the world. And that's the reason we're here today. We'll be back in just a moment as we look at New York Harbor celebrating the 4th. time to figure out how to use them. That's how the owners of a clothing store, father and son, felt about personal computers, until they got one. And a manufacturer of umbrellas, until they got one. A lot of people in small businesses don't know all the things a computer can do. But once they see what an IBM PC can do, things like give them complete accounting information in seconds instead of days, Simplify scheduling and billing, track inventory and monitor expenses quickly and easily in their own office. Then some of the most skeptical become very enthusiastic. And that makes us at IBM very proud. We've got more computers helping more small businesses than anybody. IBM Personal Computers. Small business is getting big on them. See them at an authorized dealer. not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? I really... Everybody out! Then, one day, we found an old treasure map. Let's Teddy Ruxpin comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. Think we'll win? Maybe, if the champ doesn't show up. Yeah, Jimmy Joe. Lightning, I'm sure to win with my craft thick and spicy. <laughs> Just think, who can compete with a sauce so thick it stands up to my drumstick test? Who can compete with spices you can see and taste? Mmm, mmm. Hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. Craft thick and spicy barbecue sauce. So thick and spicy, there's no contest. Over Governor's Island, that is and over Manhattan Island, that is the fire station at the tip of Battery Park on Manhattan, once again on land that wasn't always there. But that curve you see on your screen was once called Battery Park because it was where the gun batteries were kept. And it is where thousands of people have gathered this morning from all over the country and, quite frankly, from all over the world. They've come for a variety of reasons, and they have been enabled to come here for a variety of reasons. Lynn Schur is standing with Rick and Kay Smith. Lynn? Peter, you and I were lucky enough to get here because we're working here. I'm with two people who came here because they won a trip to New York as a prize. Rick and Kay Smith are from Rancho Cordova, a suburb of Sacramento, California. Rick's a truck driver. Kay's a sales clerk. Rick, tell me about your seven days in New York free of charge. How's it been? So far, it's been great. What have you done? Oh, we went and seen... Uh... I can't think. Little cats. Broadway, Broadway show? We went and seen Cats. That was great. It's everything that I thought it would be. Okay, Kay, you're the one that actually won this big prize. Tell me how it happened. Well, I just filled out an entry form every time I went to the store to shop, and mine happened to got picked, and along with 10 others. So. This was at the supermarket. Did you expect something from like this from the supermarket? Uh, no, they're always having some kind of contest around Sacramento, and this happened to have been one of them, and I just... Haven't have been a lucky one, I guess. <laughs> okay, tell me about your weekend. What is it about the Statue of Liberty that, that made you want to enter that contest and obviously win it? The excitement of getting to see her after all these years of seeing pictures of the boats and the immigrants coming over. and It's just, it always brought tears to my eyes to see that, and I thought it would be a good time to come see her. 
And has it lived up to your expectations? Oh, yes. I just hope I get to go and tour it tomorrow. Okay, so do we. Rick and Kay, thanks very much. And Peter, we have some more prize winners here in the gallery in the grandstand, and we'll get back to you later with some of them. Peter? Thanks, Lynn. Uh, Kay Smith was saying that she hopes to get to see it. We should tell you that the Statue of Liberty will be open to the public, I think it is tomorrow or the next day, and we'll absolutely clarify that for you because it has now been completely refurbished in every respect. That'll tell you the sun is out today as people begin to put on the lotion. And we should remind you on the July the 4th, if it isn't too preachy, about the possibility of skin cancer if you expose yourself too long to the sun. Kay Smith was also saying that uh, she had filled out an entry farm and it never occurred to her to come to the Statue of Liberty particularly before. That's rather like Lee Iacocca, the man who's done so much to uh, get the Statue of Liberty restored. He admitted that before the president asked him to help with the refurbishment. He had not been there since he was a child when his father had taken it. He said it didn't mean the same thing to him as it did to his father. That, of course, was before he was involved. About a million and a half or two million people visit the statue every year, and it is all now designed, including, we must tell you, designed better for the handicapped than it has been in the past. So if you happen to know or are a handicapped person, you have no need to be concerned about coming to see the Statue of Liberty. Rebel car, what was that we were looking at? I apologize for going on I think there, that was Libertad. I, it uh, was a little hard to tell from the from that angle, but I think it was the Libertad. Uh, now, yes. can you tell what kind yeah. of a ship that is just by looking at her yes. sails? Yes, she is a full-rigged ship. As you count, you can see three masts, and you can see the square yards. The square sails are not set, and that is a function of the wind. There's so a full rig yep, ship. What do you call the square sails on the all square sails? Well, they all have individual names. On the foremast, there's the four course, which is the lower one, and the two sails above that are upper and lower topsails, and they are made, you could have one sail in that area, but they're made smaller to handle them more easily. And then above the topsail, there's a tagallant, and above the tagallant, there's a royal. Sometimes called the skyscraper, yep. which is how these enormous buildings got their name skyscrapers. They were originally that name taken from the very uppermost sail on some of these tall ships. They are under power today, as well as under sail. Yesterday was a magnificent sailing day in the harbor, but looking at them now in a somewhat more leisurely way is every bit as gratifying. We talked a little earlier about the Amerigo Vespucci, the tall ship from Italy. ABC's Ray Gandolf is the lucky fellow on her. Ray? Uh, we, uh, we are number 13 in line, Peter, and uh, we got underway about uh, 40 minutes ago, and uh, it looked for a while as if it were going to be Operation Diesel for us here today. It may still turn out that way, but about 25 minutes ago, along about 10 o'clock, uh, the men went aloft, the cadets and the seamen, and began setting the sails and squaring off the cross arms up there. And uh, they may give it a shot. Some of the ships, uh, those with triangular sails primarily, are partially rigged, and uh, a lot of the ships have sail out there. And uh, there's, there's not, much, not much wind, but uh, I think we're going to give it a shot. Back to you, Peter. Well, some years ago, Ray, when sail was the mode of power around the world, you look forward to, because in a windy day, it was a dangerous and nasty life to lead. The food was awful. The conditions were terrible. Today, it is glorious. There's the yard arm, Revel Carr. What are those men doing up there? Well, I think what they are doing is the equivalent of what we saw on the Iowa. We saw people manning the rail on the Iowa, and here they are manning the yards. That is, in fact, the origin of the manning of the rail. In other words, they're paying tribute there today. Indeed, that's the salute. And uh, it was done uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. But they have to go up there, you're telling us, well, in order to get those sails down, in order to sail? That's true. Those sails need to be, people have to go along off to those yards to set those sails and to furl them. As you were saying, there, that was uh, a 